call to order the uh, Port Commission meeting, February 1st, 2022. Uh, I'd like to take roll call. Uh, Commissioner Bell. Here. Commissioner Shepard. Here. Commissioner Briscoe is here. All three commissioners are present. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll read our mission statement just for kicks today so everybody knows what we're supposed to be doing. The Port of Bellingham mission statement to promote sustainable economic development, optimize transportation gateways, and manage publicly owned and land and facilities to benefit Whatcom County. So, uh, where's my advisory committee? There it is. We have a Marina Advisory Committee meeting, the MAC meeting, February 8th at 6 p.m. on Zoom. I'm assuming that's still in effect. And we have a BIAC, the Bellingham International Airport Advisory Committee meeting on April 14th at 4 p.m. on Zoom. And I'm assuming that is still correct. So those are our two uh, meetings that come up and we'll uh, move to public comment. Do we have anyone, Rob? Um, I think the MAC has been canceled. If Tiffany's on here, can you chime in? But I think they canceled the MAC for February and the next one isn't until March. Yes. That is correct. Okay, so the MAC meeting has been canceled till March. That is correct, till March 8th. Okay. I see uh, Mr. Lesau, is that how you pronounce that, John? Your last name? Uh, you're muted. Still muted. Still muted, John. There, there you, you go. go. Can you hear me now? Yes, sure. yes. Great, thank you. <clears throat> uh, John Lesso, Point Roberts. Uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, thank Commissioner Briscoe for calling me yesterday regarding the email that I sent to all of you, along with uh, copies to Whatcom County Council and Executive Sidhu about their prospective purchase of the Point Roberts Marina by the Port of Bellingham, which uh, Commissioner Briscoe assured me was not uh, anywhere near a fait accompli, although to read the local uh, coverage of this, it would seem that's something that uh, a lot of people do want. And of course, if it's free, particularly uh, of a distressed property like the marina, and there's an opportunity for someone else to buy it, then uh, everyone in the community is going to support it. I had asked in that email, and I'll ask you again, just for the record, come up to Point Roberts in the next 30 days, or even 60 days, and I will take you on a tour of Point Roberts and show you what the point looks like. If you have not been up there in the past year or two, then you really deserve to come up and have a look at it. Not to get some kind of report or glowing report from some community group that may in fact say, oh, this is a great idea, because it's not. Point Roberts is a second world country moving to third world. Everything is bankrupt and messed up. And for any of you to make a decision without coming up here and having a look, would be a dereliction of duty by yourselves, as well as the county council and the county executive. So that is uh, that is my statement. I trust it's going into the record, and I will again invite you, Ken, Michael, if you wish to come up to Point Roberts, drive up. I'll take you for a little tour of the point. It won't take long, and you can judge for yourself as to whether or not it's a good idea to invest any amount of money or time in this fool's errand. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Uh, any comments by anybody on that? Okay. Rob, we got anybody else that wants to? Yeah, if there's anyone else wants to provide public testimony, please unmute yourself and speak up. I'm only seeing port staff as the other uh, members of the Zoom, Commissioner. Oh, there is a Lauren Ashby on here, but other than that, there's no public. I, I will make a quick response. Hey, John, did we, just so you know, I we're, we're a long ways <laughs> from that. We're a long way from what the press coverage has has you believing. Long ways. We, we're, I'm not, we're, I don't believe it. We're currently, I don't believe it. We're currently, I'm saying is, we're currently you know, you poking that it. thing with a 10-foot pole. Good. You're a big picture guy, Ken. You Thanks. always were on the planning commission. I appreciate that. Thanks, John. Okay. Any uh, Anyone else just uh, come in anywhere that wants to speak before we wrap this section of it up? 
Okay, I don't see any. Do you see any, Rob? No, no, sir. All right. We're going to move on to the uh, consent agenda. Carrie, if you please. Motion to approve consent agenda items A through E. Gentlemen, any, Commissioner Bell, any questions? I have nothing. Commissioner Shepard, any questions? Uh, all my questions have already been addressed by staff. As well as my questions that I had uh, have been answered too. All right, well, I had some questions too when they were answered. Oh, okay. great. Right. Good. Well, <laughs> like not, that, were you? not to be outdone. Jeez. <laughs> How many questions did you have? <laughs> Ask first. <laughs> were, were they good questions? I was just going to dispense with them. And staff keeps a tally, so. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, if you please. Motion to approve consent agenda items A through E. Any questions? No, I have all them? my questions oh, answered okay. by staff. Commissioner Shepard. All my good questions were addressed. Okay. Commissioner Shepard. Yes. Commissioner Bell. <laughs> yes. And Commissioner Briscoe's yes. Carries 3 0. Uh, Carrie, we have a presentation, I presume. Tamara is going to speak on the 2021 financial report. Tamara, are you with us? Do we get a joke today or? You're smiling. Oh, sorry. You got something for a us? A under the weather. No joke. I promise one next time, though, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Tamara Sajak, CFO, um, Port of Bellingham. I do have the financial information and miscellaneous, miscellaneous items to report this afternoon. Let me just share my screen. All right. <clears throat> So we'll start with those miscellaneous items. Uh, the stormwater, my screen would advance. Uh, the stormwater program um, for the fourth quarter of last year, all training and record keeping are in compliance. And I'm happy to report all testing results were within normal limits at both locations. Our public records requests <clears throat> ended the year at 128 requests, which has been pretty consistent year over year. Um, five large requests are ongoing, and the remaining are pretty standard, just bid document, CTTV footage, things of that nature. Uh, the safety reports, um, we had one reportable injury in 2021. Um, I wish that was zero, but this one is still a good number. Um, in Blaine, we've been accident-free since at least 2010 when we started keeping these records and Blaine is START certified. And START stands for Safety Through Achieving Recognition Together. And that program was created by LNI to recognize exceptional safety programs. And the airport's been accident-free from 2017 to 2021. So again, uh, remarkable. Looking at our open claims for the port, we've got one, uh, the insurance carrier has been put on notice um, I have here currently costs are below deductible, but I just checked this afternoon and those costs did, have exceeded our deductible in January. So I'll be reporting uh, next quarter uh, what that looks like, but we will likely be putting um, a claim together. Can I ask a quick question? Um, do our insurance policies typically pay back what our expenses are? Do, yes. do we typically so, get back 100% of what we invest or are they, do they, are they problematic? They're, no, they're pretty easy to work with. Um, we keep close, um, good records um, and give them detailed expense reports. And we've been very fortunate um, to have gotten most, if not all of our prior claims reimbursed outside the deductible. So we have an open claim against the port. This is that ongoing claim from a few years ago and our legal team is, is managing that claim. So moving into the financials, uh, this is port wide. We came in at $25.2 million in revenues. Uh, we were expecting 23.5, um, so that exceeded our plan. And then expenses came in at 20.2. We were budgeting 20.9. So overall, we were expecting 2021 to end with a 2.5 million net revenue, and we ended up with almost $5 million, so, so positive. And just to put that in perspective, in 2019, pre-pandemic, our revenues 
were 26.7. So we're moving back toward normal. And then our net was 8.4. So again, just kind of headed back pre-pandemic levels. Going into the individual divisions, this is the airport. Uh, revenues came in at 4.2 million as opposed to uh, what we planned at 3.7. So that's great news. Uh, the biggest line item there is concession fees increased. And that indicates that our vendors are doing better than we planned. And then expenses came in um, a little under budget. Uh, just as a as a comparison in 2019, our airport revenues were $6.8 million. And we did receive some CARES funding that I'll mention later, but it was about 2.8 in 2021. So that will bring the airport back to pre-pandemic revenue levels. That was really helpful. Our marinas also performed well. Uh, both recreational and commercial moorage numbers are up as well as boat launches and transient recreational moorage. Um, Belaine had most of the revenue growth, so um, so that's great news. Um, and then expenses um, came in just under budget, which is a little remarkable because remember we increased our security costs and we thought that would kind of blow the budget out, but it really didn't. We were able to absorb those extra costs by saving in other areas. Moving over to the cruise terminal, our revenue is a bit higher than anticipated and most of that is due to um, negotiated new rates mid-year and then expenses were as expected. So um, uh, the ferries were pretty much on schedule. The shipping terminal is a good news story. So we budgeted $540,000 in revenue for the shipping terminal and came in at almost $850,000. And that was due to the rock activity over the summer. So with that rock activity, we do have a longshore labor that we have to um, hire. So those expenses came in at $822,000 more than, more than we budgeted. But $800,000 47 in revenue, 822 in expenses, we came in a net positive net revenue, which is not what we expected and not what we had planned. Real estate continues to be steady. If I showed probably a 10 year uh, trend, it would be steady revenue, steady expenses. And uh, this just shows a continued high occupancy of our spaces for rent. And then those expenses are fairly predictable. Our overhead costs remain within budget and similar to previous years. So no, no big surprises, no, no un unexpected costs. The waterfront district revenues came in same level 2020 and 2021, almost exactly the same. And then um, expenses the same. And those are expected. So with the planned growth, it's fairly predictable. And then all other public. So the revenues here in 2020, it was $83,000. And this is mainly the meetings and events um, spaces. So we rent out the say the Squalicum Boathouse and the dome room for weddings and such. And uh, <clears throat> with all the COVID cancellations, we only came in 83,000 in 2020. And then we were, we were pretty optimistic and said, no, 2021 is going to be much better. And uh, management, management was right, came in at 266,000. So starting to uh, creep back up there. And then expenses came in under budget. And this was a, this was a, a little bit surprising to me because this is these expenses, the 2.9 million included the Point Roberts emergency ferry. So even though we didn't budget for that, we were able to um, absorb this cost um, by saving in other areas. And then just a couple of things to note. Um, I did mention the CARES relief for the airport came in at $2.8 .9, million in 2021. So that was really, really helpful. And then we were able to pass through um, just over $600,000 in grants to small businesses throughout the community. And then capital projects, we spent almost $20 million in 2021. And this is worth noting because in 2020, our spending was about seven and a half million dollars. So we've really picked up momentum on those projects in 2021, and hopefully we can carry through to 2022. So how does all of that roll into the port's net worth? 
um, pretty nicely. So this is year over year, December 2020 on the right, we had assets of 405 million, liabilities 136 million, leaving us with net assets of 269 million. Fast forward a year, and those net assets are growing to 271 million, and that's due to us paying off debt and not issuing additional debt. And the last thing to report are our investments. Uh, so we have $10.5 million in federal securities, uh, earning at an average yield of 1.5%. And we have the remainder, remainder of our extra cash in the LGIP local government investment pool. And that's just over $50 million at the end of 2021, earning under 0.1%. Unfortunately, there's just very little opportunity right now to reinvest longer term. So holding it in the LGIP, uh, waiting for better investment options. I just hate to invest in five years at, you know, 0.2%. So that's what we're hoping there. Any questions or comments or any additional information you'd like me to report for next year, capital projects, anything like that? Well, thank you for the uh, presentation. And I do have a question regarding the Point Roberts Ferries. Did we do we get kind of reimbursement from that from the county, or do we? Is that the whole hundred percent figured in there? No, for twenty twenty one, it's a hundred percent figured in there. For twenty twenty, we got reimbursed for a few months of the ferry from the county using federal dollars. Uh, but that for twenty twenty one through, I think it was January through August, we were on our own. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, all right, that's all I have. Uh, Commissioner Bell, no questions? Commissioner Shep? No, the, my only question was about the ferry as well. So, Just a so, comment. Nice job, Tamara, thank you. Rob, nice. Thank you. Thank you. This is a well-run port, and I think this shows it. Yeah, when we uh, we start doing things like running ferries and, and, and the things that just come out of nowhere to, to come out with a balance sheet like that, uh, Every, everybody from the, every level has worked together to, to get to where we're at, and that's good. Okay, Carrie, what are we doing next? Motion to approve updates to resolution number 1401 for the Comprehensive Scheme of Harbor Improvement Plan, Greg McHenry. Good evening, commissioners. Greg McHenry, planning analyst for the Port of Bellingham. Uh, the comprehensive scheme of harbor improvements is a port commission document that can be as general or specific as the port commissioners uh, deem appropriate. SeaShip, uh, which is the acronym for the, the latest digital storyboard format, uh, is intended to be the document that fairly and fully informs the public of the nature and extent of proposed improvements within the Port District. At the last commission meeting, a public hearing was conducted and uh, no one spoke. Um, the Port SEPA official also issued a determination of non-significance on January 17th and established a 14-day comment period, which ends today ended today. Um, the only SEPA comment that we received thus far was a correction uh, to some contact uh, phone numbers um, related to the inadvertent discovery policy. Uh, in addition to this change, other non-substantive grammatical corrections have been made. Some of the graphics were compressed uh, in order to better function on overall devices. Um, in short, SeaShip is a living document and anticipated to be updated annually. Staff recommends approval. Thank you, Greg. Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Shepard, any questions? I don't have any questions. We saw this last meeting and um, got to have a chance to look over it. I think it's a nice document and um, it is nicely accessible. I really like the way it's been laid out and available to the public to uh, interact with. Okay, thank you. Is that, that all? Commissioner Bell. It's going to be an early night. Uh, no, I have no comments. I think it's a fantastic. Thanks, Greg. 
You bet. And I, I have none, Greg. I think you've done a great job here, and thank you. Carrie, if you please. Sure. Motion to approve updates to resolution number 1401 for the comprehensive scheme of harbor improvement plan. Commissioner Shepard. Yes. Commissioner Bell. Yes. Commissioner Briscoe's yes. Carrie's 3 0. So, uh, man, this meeting's uh, <laughs> zipping right along. So, uh, uh, we'll go to any, uh, any further public comment. Has anyone else uh, joined us, Rob, that you see that wants to talk? I, I don't see anything. No one's got their hand up. Yeah, if you're out there and you want to make a public comment, please unmute yourself. I'm not seeing any, Commissioner. Okay. So we'll move on to other business, which is uh, for those of you who are watching, that's uh, discussions amongst the commissioners. As, as most people know, we, uh, we cannot meet unless it's in public and talk about things. So the other business is our time to, to speak about things so that we stay within the, the rules of the road here. Uh, Commissioner Bell. I have nothing today. Oh, come on. Oh, wow. Nothing? Right. Not, not, not looking a... for a record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on pace. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a, a couple. Not on. A uh, couple updates. Uh, Rob, did the RFP go out? Yes, it did. Give, <laughs> give us a little update about <laughs> how the um, public can know about this and uh, what are our next steps. Elliot, you out there? You want to handle this one? And this is going to be on the RFP for the board mill building for those of uh, you folks that are. Watching on screen here. I don't see Elliot. So yeah, you can find uh, you can find the RFP on the port website. Um, it went out yesterday. Uh, it's got uh, two links to uh, <laughs> basically a Dropbox. Oh, there's Elliot. Go ahead, take it over, Elliot. Uh, uh, sorry, a little slow in the uh, buttons here. Um, yeah, the RFP uh, uh, did go out yesterday. Um, we have uh, a long list of parties we've been uh, noting over the past uh, four or five months that are interested. We have uh, also notified them that it has uh, gone out and gotten quite a few inquiries uh, in today. Um, we have uh, about 12 weeks to go before um, uh, proposals are due back, uh, but that should give adequate time for architectural uh, and engineering teams and finance teams to uh, uh, flesh out proposals uh, adequately. Um, quite quite happy uh, uh, to have this out and I think we're gonna get uh, quite good responses to it. Well, that, that's great. Um, I, I thought the documents were well, well presented. Um, I thought that it was a, it, it really, communicated the uh, intent behind this um, opportunity. And it's, I, it's no small deal for us. I, this is a, a really big deal for, um, for, for me as a commissioner, probably for our organization as a whole, and the Waterfront District Development to be taking this next step. So I certainly appreciated the, the time and effort that went into the RFP document. And um, just wanna comment on how pleased I am to be moving forward on this project. and. Um, that I, I really do think this is a big step for us. Thank you. Mr. Bell, any comment on this? Yeah, do, what did you use for public distribution of this? Is this just something you sent to interested parties or did you send it out to via some other mechanism? No, this has been, uh, it can be found by anyone uh, watching here on the Port of Bellingham website. Um, uh, also linked into the documents that you can draw down with the request for proposal, pr proposal uh, on our uh, Port of Bellingham website are links to a number of uh, other public background documents that talk about uh, the past history, the structural engineering, how it's positioned, uh, the regulatory frameworks that it sits in, uh, all in uh, 12 or 14 um, uh, documents that will give uh, prospective uh, developers uh, and construction people and architects the information they need to uh, create viable, uh, viable proposals. Um, so uh, I'm happy uh, to take emails uh, helping people to find that, uh, but that can be found on our, uh, on our website uh, under, um, uh, under uh, proposals. 
So that, that Commissioners, we'll also do a social media push. We'll get this out on Facebook and Tweet and probably Instagram and all the other ones I don't know about and uh, make sure that the, the ports has a pretty good social media following, so we'll make sure all those folks get it. Is there a standard place to post an RFP for something like this in a construction? You know, it used to be you took out an advertisement in the Herald, um, but that doesn't quite have the readership it used to. So uh, social media is the way to go now. And uh, like I said, the, the port has a really good following on a lot of its social media platforms, so that will help get the word out as well. Good. I've taken a number of uh, calls today, and I would encourage all of you to... Uh, share information uh, about this. Um, that's probably the, the best way that it can uh, that it can get out. Most of them local? Uh, I've spoken to people in three different uh, states today and uh, British Columbia. So um, regional. Hmm. Elliot, part. correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was also requested that it go out on the WPPA website. That is correct. Yeah. And Rob, I'm glad to hear you're finally behind us on the social media. <laughs> the key word is I'm behind them. <laughs> Rob is currently figuring out how to use TikTok for this. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, I think you did a great job on this. Uh, I was, uh, when I read through it, I was uh, impressed that uh, everything that I remember each commissioner spoke to independently was included into that and thank you for that um, and uh, and thanks for the talk we had today I appreciate uh, you, you flagged me down and we had our discussion today that's what I like to do so thank you anything uh, you have oh, thank you Michael? yeah I've got a couple other items um, Staying on the waterfront for a moment, uh, Rob and I have talked a couple of times about um, some next steps for planning down at the waterfront and some um, discussions for the three of us to have with staff around a couple upcoming um, decision points. And I think one is the alcohol building, um, that it would be useful for us to have a further conversation about what, we, what do we expect to see there and how do we tee that up for the next development opportunity. Because I'm conscious that there's going to be interest in this RFP, and there's only going to be one party selected. And I want to make sure that we have some other proposals in the pipeline for those interested parties to continue to have an opportunity to invest in our community. And and if so, I re recall correctly, isn't that how we planned it? As soon as this came out, we were, we we're going to start speaking that. And yeah. is, is that something, Commissioner, you'd like to do now and the other businesses kind of throw it around? or? I think it probably warrants another session for us to be able to have staff tee up um, some information about that one. And the other piece is the uh, GP Wharf, another one that we've talked about a couple times. And I think they're both ready for some more uh, commission direction to staff, uh, possibly in a work session for us to um, take those on. I think prior to teeing up the alcohol plant for an RFP, we have to do some more interior planning, and that's going to involve Harcourt, the city, and the port sitting down, figuring out what road's going to go where, because right now it's just a very rough outline of the plan. So that's the next step, so we can figure out you know, where the parking lot goes, where the street goes, all of that, and uh, we're going to do that over the next uh, 30 to 60 days with you. Okay, okay. very good. Um, I just have couple more um, want to update you on broadband you know we continue to um, uh, be successful in those state grants and really looking forward to that implementation and we had a productive meeting I guess it was last week with uh, Petrocor Petrocor is the statewide port funded um, broadband entity that kind of tracks legislation and initiatives and implementation of uh, broadband uh, throughout the state and um, I continue to be feel like we are setting um, leadership throughout the state in, in terms of connecting um, homes to uh, fiber and uh, appreciate Petrocor um, being able being a partner for us and helping us uh, track upcoming legislation that's useful um, and uh, with our, our, our different agreements we have with our uh, um, industry partners. Um, the last one I have is I fielded a call from a um, community member who was concerned that about moorage um, in the harbor and that our plans for m redevelopment of the ASB pond were not, um, that they disregarded the fact that we have a full harbor. <laughs> and um, I, I was able to call the individual and I think help 
walk through the decision making on that and um, recognize that the use for marine trades expansion in the ASB um, is not driven by a, a expectation that the harbor is not full. <laughs> we know the harbor is full, particularly in Squalicum, and um, that uh, we continue to look for ways that we can um, alleviate some of that pressure. And I, I know Seaview is continuing to work on their dry stack storage, um, but it, it does have me wondering about some of these upcoming construction projects we have, like rebuilding parts of the inner harbor, and what happens to our full harbor and all the boats that are in there when we are going to need to start some of the construction on those um, sections that need replacement. I expect we're going to do this in a phased approach, but um, you know, we once had a lot of use of Blaine Harbor as overflow, but Blaine Harbor, as we've seen in our financials, is quite full now. Um, and so how, how are we planning for some of these long range squeezes on our full capacity? Is it bad timing to say by the point, Roberts Marina? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's a genuine concern, and uh, we're really counting on the uh, sea, sea View Marina dry stack storage, alleviating some pressure in Squalicum, reconfiguring those slip sizes to handle bigger boats, since the smaller ones will be able to go upland to be stored, and using that uh, Sea View as kind of a buffer while we're rebuilding the harbor. But it's uh, going to be a logistical nightmare. It's not going to be easy. Um, we, in the past, when we've done these kinds of things, like you said, we've had uh, capacity elsewhere, and we don't have that. So it's going to be a bit of a juggling act. But I think the key here is to phase it in such a way that we're not biting off more than we can chew, and we're just uh, replacing the floats uh, in a number of boats that are manageable. Okay. You, you've also got a window, three-month mm -hmm. window in the summer when the fleet goes to Alaska, mm -hmm. and this, this commercial side gets mm -hmm. pretty bare. Yeah, so good point. So if, if you plan right, you can shuffle into that, mm -hmm. and and as you're getting getting completed on what you're working on, you can find out who's coming back first. Mm -hmm. You can shuffle those guys back into that completed part of the harbor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that capacity right there is definitely nice. It, it only comes into play for August because of the fish window, and the fishermen come back in September. It's unfortunate the fish window doesn't line up with July, June and July, but we get that August month where we can get a substantial amount of work done and have some capacity over there on the commercial side. Okay, great. Well, the only other thing for... Yeah, um, can I weigh in on that? Yeah, go ahead. Are you seeing any movement in the marketplace towards um, more leasing boats or more... <clears throat> is there a marketplace shift that this might take care of itself at some point? I think there is, and we've talked to a couple of companies, uh, one in particular about uh, this exact thing, and the, uh, they're located, they have an operation down in Cordes, and they'd love to be up here, so uh, we're trying to make some slips available to provide that, so that instead of having one person per boat, they've got 10 people per boat, or 10 families per boat, so uh, that'll definitely help. And that is a trend uh, you're seeing all over the nation. Well, I don't know if it's just a, a gripe or something real to a, address, but I, I know when I walk the docks, I, I do see some vessels that appear to have been in place for as long as I've been a commissioner. Or, and, or longer. Or longer, <laughs> and probably have far more sea life on them than we have in our marine facility here, or maybe even that when I've been recently to the Seattle Aquarium. Um, should we be putting more pressure on boats that haven't moved? It's not really the intent to just store your vessel in our harbor when we have a long wait list, if you don't have an intent to use the boat anymore. I don't, we already get boats that become derelict and we have to pay and, dispose of, is there anything we should be doing to encourage these boats to, to make some more room and help us alleviate this wait list that we just have and is persistent? And just for clarification, those are the, those are the <laughs> great, great grandfathered in boats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Bell, do you wish to respond? No, but I think, I think Tiffany has something to say about this because we've had this discussion about how we can speed up that wait list. So Tiffany, it's on you. 
Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the magic of speeding up the wait list. I think there's there's a whole host of things that's not one answer. Uh, Commissioner Shepard, to your question uh, regarding boats that are sitting in spots, um, there, I think you'll see in the coming months, in fact, I know you'll see a, a push on um, our harbor masters and harbor staff doing taking a really good look on seaworthiness of vessels and following up with that. Um, so, so that's one way um, if vessels aren't seaworthy to get them out of the harbor. So we're working on that. Um, there, you know, there are some other things that we can possibly do to um, maybe discourage the backlog that we have. You know, there's some birth change request um, stuff that plugs up the, the wait list. There's the sublease. So I think you'll see in the coming months some, a little bit of movement on some of those things. But the fact of the matter is that the market... Um, the demand is greater than the supply at the moment. And so uh, it's not a terrible place to be, but there's some shifting that we need to do that we that we maybe haven't done in a number of years that that uh, we need to take a serious look at. Are you Does that answer all, your question? You're going to bring all those before the MAC? <laughs> before everybody. <laughs> so everybody can hear and see. And, and you're going to include the three-strike rule? The Oh, the offering the... Offering the uh, no, the, the three the, strike the the bump where if you if you don't if you're not ready you get three strikes before you're out is that going to be reconsidered? Yes. <laughs> so what Commissioner Bell is talking about is if you're on the wait list and we offer you a slip and you turn it down and if you do that three times you're off the wait list. Yeah. Uh, I, I would have a question as why we're going with three times. <laughs> That was my Two strikes question. are out. I don't. We just, you know, revert to American baseball, so we can certainly. I think. I think it'd be safe to say that, as as the market is right now, that we can offer somebody a slip one time, and if they don't want it, we move on. I mean, our list is that long, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and and I, I and, and we're you know we're doing a lot of I want to slip field management. I'm offered one. I'm going to tie my boat up. So, yeah. um, you know, unless there's extenuating circumstances, I don't know why we would even go past one let alone two, but uh, so, I mean, I, yeah, there's, there's that, that wait list is, is lengthy. And so I think people who are on there should be motivated. To, to really flesh that out though, the reason it was put in place was because there are people who hadn't bought their boat yet. And so they get a slip open and they go out and buy a boat. So they just wait for the next one. But I, I don't think we have the luxury. Again, it is supply and demand and, we're in a pretty good spot to to be picky. Well, I don't think it's yeah, that, there was, I think there were lots of reasons why, not lots, but several reasons. And one is, you know, you give, we were trying to fill another harbor, which in Blaine, which we have done. So some of those reasons now are no longer because of the market. And if you've got somebody that's waiting for a spot to buy a boat, that's, that, I mean, you got people that have boats that are trying to find a place to tie them up. I don't, that, that doesn't work with me very well. Yeah. So, uh, how, how are we doing this still on topic, but um, with the boathouses in Blaine? I know we've had a lot of discussion about them. As that marina gets increasingly full, those boathouses are not the most efficient use of our space. And they have been a continued sore spot for us uh, with uh, tenants who have not wanted to always pay or. That's always worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rob, do you want to answer, or you want me to? We're still working on that one. Um, <laughs> how's that for an answer? No, we we have the same goals uh, as as the commission. Was the staffs would like people to pay their bills, and if they're not, we want to get them out of the harbor. But there's a there's a legal way we have to do that, and that's what we're doing, and that takes some time. Uh, but then the commission is going to be faced with a decision about what to do with those boathouses. And I think staff's recommendation is to be tear them down and turn them into rentable slips, open water slips. Isn't that what Clint Eastwood said, the Clyde, scrap them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you looking for our opinion? Because No, I, you know, I, did, what, I understand the boathouses in the day when everything was wood. You know, you needed something to protect that wood boat. And yeah, I get it. Some of the guys don't want their fiberglass boat or their metal boat to have the sun on it, but you know they have wax and UV stuff for that. And to to think that we can stuff a boathouse in a particular place that takes up the spot of two vessels could be tying up, 
you know, when you're only putting one in, it's a, it's a luxury that I don't know that the Port of Bellingham can really afford anymore, um, let alone apparently the people that own them because they're not paying us. So yeah. I think that uh, the best thing that could happen here is that they just go away. That's my opinion. But uh, I did speak with Andy about that. I think it was a week and a half ago or so. And same conclusion that, that you just relayed to us, Rob, that we're legal has sent stuff out and, and we're waiting for, for legal to say, you know, hey, you can do this or you can't do this. So, uh, you okay. know. That's correct, Bobby. And we're working through that. Tim of our office is working with Andy and Tiffany on that. <clears throat> Very good. That's it for me. Nothing popped up. A couple things. Uh, I'd like to have a little discussion about Point Roberts for clarification for people, and they can look at the meeting, because I've gotten a numerous amount of emails about this, um, and I've answered a couple of phone calls, which is that that's what we do. It appears that uh, maybe the uh, newspaper that got a little bit of information that, yeah, we might be interested in if it's for sale, kind of took it and ran with, like, that we were, we were just about ready to sign the dotted line, and, and that's not quite the case. Um, and Rob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, as well as my fellow commissioners. Um, we we contemplated, we talked about it. It's been pulled off the market. It's my understanding that it's not listed for sale at this time. And if it was to come back on the market and we were to be interested in it, we would certainly do our due diligence, come to Point Roberts, look everything over, talk with the folks, with the shareholders, the stakeholders, so to speak, in it before anything was done. That's that's how we operate at the port. We always have on everything. Um, to be transparent with the, with the people of Point Roberts and the people of Whatcom County would be investing in it, would be the, the right thing to do, and that's what we will do. So I would like everyone who's interested in us doing something at Point <laughs> Roberts to, to understand that when the time is right, we will be talking to everybody, but right now there's nothing to talk about because Point Roberts Marina is not for sale. I have appreciated all the emails I've received. Um, you know, folks want to want to boat launch inside the marina where it was supposed to be, and I get that. That's, you know, those ty those are the types of things we would be talking to, to folks up there about if we were to do something. But as it stands right now, the Port of Bellingham does not have that on the books to do anything with, whether it's to enter into negotiations or anything, because it is not for sale. So at that time, that's where we're at. That's a good summary, Commissioner. Uh, just to full disclosure, some staff uh, did go up there uh, late summer and took a look, kicked the tires around a little bit, talked to some of the employees up there. Uh, at that time, it was being listed by Sotheby's, and it was, uh, uh, like I said, it was being listed. It was pulled off. That listing was pulled, and our discussions with the employees up there is they were no longer interested in selling it. So. Uh, we're going to partner with them. We're going to try and uh, give them opportunities for you know, environmental type stuff or marina best practices that we attend and pass that information along to them and uh, just be a good neighbor with them and be there for them. And if, the, if it comes back up to sale, then as Commissioner Briscoe said, we'll do our due diligence. So I have a, I have a request as uh, Commissioner Shepard did on a work session. I think we need to have a work session on the Blaine Industrial Area. Um, you know, we were kind of surely at the end of her career with us. We were trying, we were talking about what we were going to do up there, and then the pandemic came along. We've kind of dropped everything. Um, well, I shouldn't say dropped everything. On the background, staff has been working on various things up there, but I think that uh, the commission needs to have a work session and kind of sit down with staff and, and maybe some stakeholders and figure out where we're going to go with that area up there now that we've, it's kind of cleaned up a little bit and we've tore buildings down and. I don't really believe we have a plan on the table, and I think we need to get a plan on the table because it takes quite a while to, to even vet that stuff out. So I, I would, at some point in time, here, not too far off, I'd like to, maybe we could do it on the same day we're talking about uh, the other things, that, you know, so we don't have to do it more than once. Um, so let's see, I cleared up Point Roberts, hopefully for a lot of folks. Um, I'm assuming my Fellow commissioners are aware of our electrical stuff on the on the south side. Uh, bits and pieces of it, yeah. Okay. We'll try and get a, a good briefing for you all at the next commission meeting. Uh, the engineers are still working through trying to find the fixes and trying to figure out what went wrong in the original design as well. Um, I think that's all I have. Other than I would like to say we we had our 
I think they were the last two staff people to move around and some changes we made here, our director of marinas and our, our harbor master at Squalicum Harbor. Um, I'd like to reach out to them uh, and say thank you for the job you're doing. I've had nothing but praise from our tenants in the harbor uh, for both you folks for, for the things you're doing over there. And, and uh, it's hard to get praise out of, the, out of the marinas. And so you've got to be doing the right thing. So just keep what you're doing, doing what you're doing, and I appreciate that. Uh, anything else, gentlemen? Should we do one more round of public comment? Anything, buddy, have anything to say before we uh, adjourn this meeting? See anybody anywhere, Rob? I'm not seeing anyone, sir. Uh, I have a meeting. hand up. Oh, oh, oh. There we go, Mr. Oh. Kyle. Meeting open. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, Jim Kyle, Working Waterfront Coalition. Uh, I have a couple things. I'm wondering if current licensing relative to um, marina capacity, if current licensing contributes to seaworthiness, is that a consideration in that process? Uh, you mean current registration, Jim, for, for the boats? Yeah. They have to... Yeah, with the state, right. I think that, I, I, you know, speaking from the commercial aspect, I think the only thing that um, kind of goes to that is the insurance thing. And, you know, as you know, the Sanders Association and the Association insurance pool that I'm in, they all require a Coast Guard uh, examination every year, um, some two years, some every year. So... Um, I think the only way that part of that would come about is if the insurance companies who are insuring these vessels in our harbor were to require their vessels that they insure to have a Coast Guard examination each year, or every two years, or every five years, whatever the case may be, then I think that the licensing part of it would would fall into that because uh, the state of Washington, as far as I know, does not require you to have a Coast Guard examination to license that vessel in the state. So I, I Yeah, I think the recreational uh, side is a little different, though. And there are quite a few uh, rec boats in the harbors that are not currently licensed. And, of course, it's not the port that, that, that writes the license or the registration as a state. But it seems like that might be a leverage point that could be used in, uh, in uh, clearing out some space in the harbors. Uh, I'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention, I'm sure it was uh, an innocent mistake by Greg uh, when talking about the uh, uh, comprehensive scheme adoption and the public hearing that happened last last commission meeting. The, we did, on behalf of the Working Waterfront Coalition, testify. And we testified regarding Resolution 1396, which relates to uh, uh, residential units in harbor areas and I expected to hear back from at least one commissioner uh, and it seemed like there was going to be a discussion but nothing has been said so I'm just kind of puzzled so going forward it would be helpful to know what um, where that suggestion of an amendment to that resolution stands obviously it didn't pass muster but uh, if you could clue us into uh, why and what the situation is I'd appreciate it yeah, and Jim, we'll, we'll sit down with you and staff and talk about that. We did, as staff, reach out individually to each commissioner to talk about that and the, the uh, comprehensive scheme as it was proposed. And so happy to talk to you about that. Okay, thank you. And uh, we'll have staff look into uh, the vessel licensing, Jim, so that we, we uh, have an answer on... I, I was under the assumption that uh, they had to be vessel, had to be licensed to be in the harbor and on the water. I, I was under that assumption too. It, it is required by our rules and regulations for them to be licensed. However, we have no authority to enforce. It's a call to the police department. Uh, generally, that's. But is it not default to their mortgage? Right. Wouldn't it be a default to their mortgage agreement if they're not following the rules and regulations? You know, I'm going to have to look into that because I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I, th I think Jim brings up a good point here that that's a point of leverage for us. If the vessel's derelict and it's not licensed, it's uh, they can't moor here. Well, the other <laughs> question it raises in my mind, if it's not licensed, how do they get an insurance on it? Uh, yep, all good questions. Yep. I'll take a this look at it up, and let you know. I'm sorry. This came up uh, at the suggestion of one of our members who is uh, very active in the marine trades in, in a marine trades business and depends on working on boats uh, as part of how they how they have a profitable business and he said there 
He he had some numbers and I didn't confirm that, but they had walked the dock in a certain area and he gave me a number at the time. And I said, well, I can't do anything with that number if you want to document it and put something on paper. And, and it's probably a topic for the MAC, if, if not the commission eventually. So I have nothing concrete to present, but his his comment was there are a lot of boats there that are uh, not licensed, not currently registered, and that's a potential point of leverage. I don't believe you have to have a current license on it to insure it, but I could be wrong. I'm sorry, Tiffany, I didn't understand what you said there. Could you repeat that? Please? I don't believe you. it has to be currently licensed in order to insure the boat, but I will check into this whole thing and, and report back to you for sure. I don't, it's, it's also not an indicator of seaworthiness just to not be licensed, right? Yeah. Indicator of your responsibility. Well, sometimes not. people don't bother putting the licenses on the boats either till they actually have to do something. So it could be laying in a drawer in the vessels. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, we'll look at that. I will that. check and get back to you. Thank yep. you. Good. Good. Uh, anybody else wish to speak before uh, I try to bang the gavel one more time? Okay, meeting adjourned.